Project Gotham racing franchise was doing very well. The series got off to an amazing start on the Xbox 360 as the third game got 8s and 9s from critics who liked the physics, graphics and online features. I agree with those critics as I also liked the physics and graphics, but the car list wasn't as good as that of the second game on the original Xbox. I also thought that the career mode wasn't as good as the career mode in the second game either, but the tracks were amazing. And so was the route creator which was a brilliant addition to the game. Even though I thought the maps that you used to create the tracks could have been a little bit bigger. The success of Project Gotham Racing 3 meant that Bizarre Creations just had to make a fourth game. And they did, which was released two years later in October 2007 and it was also released on the Xbox 360. The game is set up differently to the previous three games. In Project Gotham Racing 3 you had to buy cars with money and there was enough for you to buy a supercar at the beginning. A cheap supercar but a supercar nonetheless. Because of that I felt that the third game was lacking progression and it didn't really give me any real sense of achievement as I had a car at the beginning of the game which would have taken hours to unlock in the second one. And that was my main issue with the third game. In Project Gotham Racing 4, you start off with a few low powered cars which the game gives you and even though I don't like the fact that the game was no longer about earning loads of money to collect cars and it didn't let me choose the cars that I started off with, I was glad that there were low powered cars in the game and it made the racing more fun as it was a little bit more of a challenge. That didn't really last long as I was driving an Aston Martin DBS after only an hour of gameplay. The racing isn't that much different to how it was in the third game which is good as I liked the way that the developers went about things with this aspect of the game. And I'm not talking about the way that the career mode is laid out as it is quite a bit different there and I'll talk more about that in a minute. You have the same game modes that you've had in the previous games with a few others added in. That's all well and good but I didn't record all of them as you have to unlock them as you go through the game which can take hours as this game is a lot longer than the third one. All of these different game modes keeps the game exciting as you're not just doing circuit race after circuit race. That is something that the Project Gotham Racing series had done really well from the first game in 2001 or 2000 depending on how you look at it to this one. The amount of different cities is another reason why the series never gets boring. But now we get to the bit of the game that I'm really not a fan of. Instead of having to get bronze, silver, gold or platinum in events like you've had to do in the previous three games, the difficulty is dictated by what championship you're in. And even though that is a well proven formula that all of the other racing games do, the way that the first three did it made the series so unique. So I think the series lost something when it moved to this career layout. You don't really unlock things when you complete events, except for when you do the invitationals. In events you collect kudos. The currency that has been used in all of the Project Gotham racing games and even before as it was also used in Metropolis Street Racer on the Sega Dreamcast. The kudos can be spent in the shop and the shop is a little bit weird. In most games the shop is usually a dealership or something like that but in Project Gotham Racing 4 you have to buy car packs. Sort of like DLC for most games now but in-game and with in-game money and it only includes cars that are in the base game. I prefer the way that you acquired cars in the third game a lot more. The one thing that is thankfully the same are the physics and the graphics. Almost. This is something that I think a few people are going to disagree with me on but personally I don't see a difference between the third game and this one in terms of the way that the two games look and feel when it comes to a clear day in the game. That isn't a bad thing as I really like the way the cars looked and drove in Project Gotham Racing 3. 
Well, I say I like the way that the cars looked, but some of the assets did need some work. The physics engine is a little bit different in Project Gotham Racing 4 as there's different weather conditions. I don't remember there being weather in the third game other than a clear day or clear night, but Bizarre Creations added rain, snow and ice which can catch you out as your car can hydroplane in the rain and that usually results in a crash, so you really have to be careful in the rain and snow, especially if you're on a bike. I'm not really a fan of arcade bike games, so I can't comment on the bikes here, especially as I think I chose a bike once or twice throughout the whole time I played the game. The graphics and physics may pretty much be the same, but the one aspect of the game that was a massive improvement were the tracks. Just like the previous three games, Project Gotham Racing 4 has tracks in cities all over the world. The game has all of the locations that were in the third one, with five new cities. So you have London, New York City, Tokyo, Las Vegas, Macau, St. Petersburg, Shanghai, Quebec City, the Nürburgring, and the Michelin Test Track, which I believe is fictional. All of the cities look amazing, but I am a little bit annoyed that the root creator was missing as that gave the third game something that other racing games didn't have, but I'm not sure what that thing is. Just like the tracks, the car list was also a massive improvement over the car list in the third game. Project Gotham Racing 4 has 130 vehicles, and it's not just mainly sports cars and supercars like the third game. Not only do you have bikes, sports cars and supercars, but Project Gotham Racing 4 marks the return of low-powered cars as well. So you have things like the Lancia Delta, Ford Sierra RS Cosworth and the GMC Cyclone. The car models look a lot better than they did in the third game and there's some visual customization as well. The visual customization isn't as in-depth as it is in other racing games that were released at around the same time such as Forza Motorsport 2 and Need for Speed Pro Street, but you can do a few things to your car which means that it is more in depth than Gran Turismo 5 Prologue, Test Drive Unlimited and the previous game in the Project Gotham Racing series, so I guess there is some improvement there, even if the only thing that you can do is add a different livery. The livery editor is alright. I have seen better, but I have definitely seen a lot worse as well. It was a good start, but sadly Bizarre Creations never got to improve this feature in any future games. Project Gotham Racing 4 was the last game in the series. If there was to be a fifth one, then it probably would have been released in 2009 if it was going off the same release cycle as the rest of the series. I think the reason why Bizarre Creations didn't develop a fifth game is because Activision bought the studio for $107.4 million, then decided that a fifth game wouldn't be such a good idea even though all of the Project Gotham Racing games did well critically and sold in huge numbers. And then before Activision shut Bizarre Creations down in 2010, they had to develop a completely different racing game in a brand new series with unproven gameplay mechanics. That game was Blur, which actually I can't wait to review as it has been quite a few years since I last played it, and if I remember correctly I actually did enjoy it. After Bizarre Creations shut down, a lot of the developers joined forces with ex-employees of Codemasters and a few other companies to develop the Forza Horizon series with Turn 10 Studios. And that is now almost on its fifth game, which was the most anticipated game of E3 2021. So, silver linings and whatnot. I am really conflicted by Project Gotham Racing 4. It's not a bad game, but it's also not brilliant. There's a few things that I think were done better in this game, and a few things that were done better in the third one. Would I recommend Project Gotham Racing 4 over 3? Mm, I don't know. But, 
You can buy both of them for next to nothing these days. So I say get both as they are very different from one another in different ways, but also very similar. This review is a little bit shorter than I would have liked, but there really isn't much about this game that hasn't been said for the other Project Gotham Racing games, and I think it's because the third and fourth games are so similar. And that's where Bizarre Creations went wrong. We're sort of starting to see the same issue with the Forza Horizon series, which is sort of the successor to Project Gotham Racing. This has been my review of Project Gotham Racing 4 on the Xbox 360. If you liked this review, then give it a like. If you didn't, then give it a dislike. And if you want to see more, then please consider subscribing and joining the Discord server linked in the description. Goodbye.